what the presentation is about uh, is about our activities and the work that we've done up to this point uh, as part of Teresa and it also provides a little bit of context uh, about the South African national um, landscape in terms of data intensive research. There are very close links, uh, connections to the presentation that you've just heard. In fact, Ina and I are working closely together. Uh, they are looking at certain aspects of, of um, data, knowledge creation, research, and so on. And uh, we are looking at um, a different, have a different perspective um, uh, of the same um, area, if you like. Okay. Um, outline of my presentation, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the bigger picture. Um, I don't think that this is unique to South Africa. I think every developing or developed country invests heavily, but I'll just give a very brief overview of what the picture looks like in South Africa. Then I'll talk about Nikki. It used to be Nikki's. They dropped the S, um, and I'll explain why later. And then um, the infrastructure that we're building, and again, uh, we were not sure whether we should call it Sandy. And ladies' names are usually much better for these kinds of things, um, or Sanders. But uh, I'll explain what that is, and then say a little bit about what it is that we are doing and where we are going, and then uh, some concluding remarks. Okay, so here's uh, a very, um, a very uh, partial overview of South Africa's investment in research data. I don't think this is uh, comprehensive or exhaustive by any means, but it gives you an idea of what South Africa as a country is investing into the acquisition and the generation of data. Um, the, the main players there would be SANSA, uh, South African National Space Agency. Um, they um, receive data through various satellites, um, lots of data, Earth observation data, and they have to store these data, go, this uh, resources going back more than 30 years. So you can think about what that means in terms of storage, for example. And then there are other uh, governmental or para-governmental institutions that um, host data. It's not always theirs, but they are the custodian of some of these data assets. Um, some research councils, like the Human Sciences Research Council. Um, and then, of course, there are, like in all developing countries, there are, there's your know, academic institutions. Um, where the research community, the actual academ academics, they hold a lot of data. And um, the sad part about all of this is that they think it's their data. And <laughs> it's a difficult thing to change. It's a difficult attitude of perception to change because the funding models at these institutions mitigate against them sharing data. It's, you know, the golden egg. And they, all, the, all the publications and everything, student, PhDs and whatever, come sometimes, I shouldn't say all, from these data sets. So that's a problem. Um, the biggest player, the biggest game in town at the moment is the SKA. Um, I've given some numbers there, two billion euros by the European, well, the consortium, SKA International Consortium. That's what was committed to uh, until very recently. I think the numbers have changed. Um, 650 million for phase one. I think that is 2016, 17. And then S South Africa itself is so far invested um, I don't know how much that is in euros, uh, about 600 million 
euros so far. And for us, for a country like South Africa or for a country in Africa, that is a big investment. And there are many other priorities, strategic priorities, where people would argue that these investments could have been um, better utilized and so on. So that's the a very uh, quick and dirty overview <laughs> of the national data uh, landscape. Um, now on to what Nikki is, and the, the previous slide that you saw is actually one of the chief motivators, the main rationale for building this particular infrastructure. It is a, it is a thing and it is an activity. The thing part is the actual hardware, the cyber infrastructure that we would like to put down. Now there's already a legacy hardware infrastructure existing since 2008. There's the Center for High Performance Computing, CHPC. There's SANREN, which is the local NREN. Um, and then uh, my section, which is about data, very recent uh, creation. I think it's been officially created about a year or so ago. It's been on the table for much longer than that, but it was formally created um, about two years ago. But the idea with Nikki is that we want to integrate these three bits, and that's the part that you see here at the bottom. Um, the three um, blocks there. It's basically a hardware infrastructure uh, that you need for a national cyber infrastructure. And then on top of that, we would want to build these um, virtual research environments. Or you can call it gateways, if you like, or portals. Uh, but essentially, uh, cyber environments pitched at particular thematic domains and six of these have been identified for South Africa. It's um, explained and described in what is called the South African Research Infrastructure Roadmap. Um, so th the Research Infrastructure Roadmap, that would be the main driver for these thematic areas. And we would like to think of each one of those um, outlines, ovals, as a research infrastructure or a research ecosystem. It's not just hardware or software. It's a community, it's an ecosystem, and everything else that goes with it. So DIRISA is a component of this national infrastructure. Uh, our objectives, there are basically five key objectives and there's a lot of, lots of parallels with what uh, Sai Gaia is doing, what, what um, ASAF is doing and um, you can see we're basically pitching at the same kind of targets. Um, robust infrastructure and services, that's your hardware and software um, um, setup. Data management principles. Uh, practices, framework, strategies that has to be in place, development of capacity, expertise, it's got to be there, uh, the people aspect, advocacy and outreach concerns, talking to uh, users and convincing them that they should share their data and um, convincing them of the benefits and advantages of you know working together with others. Um, and then lastly, a, a requirement by our funder to coordinate uh, data intensive research at the national level. That means we need to coordinate all data intensive research activities, projects, initiatives, um, including um, re um, research, development, and education. And um, I'll say a little bit more about that later on. This here is um, a picture of, of the um, hardware and software infrastructure, the system that we would like to build. It's only showing 
the data management uh, aspect of it. And uh, what you see in blue is what we have already, or what we have inherited from um, the previous uh, rendition of what Teresa was. And it's basically a, a, a two petabyte storage facility where you can you know, store data. Um, and what we're now building or busy with are the, the things that you see in red or red shaded. So we've got at the moment uh, Derisa, what we call tier one storage infrastructure. Um, that feeds into uh, what we call a research cloud, South African research cloud, if you like. Um, there's some technologies there, and the main entry to the system is that portal that we are currently working on. Uh, some functions are already there, services are already being developed there, and uh, there are quite a number of um, core tools, middle. I won't call it middleware, but some other tools that you also need ancillary to the actual storage function to, to manage your, your data storage properly. There's, for example, a data management planning tool. Uh, we're building a registry for, um, uh, if you're aware of DONA, which is one of the global institutions for maintaining a global network of registries, PDI, uh, PIDs, uh, much like data site and so on. We are conversing with ORCID and uh, we actually, all, given all the benefits of ORCID, we're, I think there's a, a little bit of caution about imposing ORCID on the research community as the only a resource for um, a PID for a human or for a, u a user or a researcher, but that's another debate. And then what we would like to do is link into existing storage infrastructures, uh, essentially um, uh, develop our catalogs um, from that, and that basically makes this a, a, a kind of a federated infrastructure in much the same way that the Saigaya infrastructure is built. Um, the main services that we've identified, and you can see if you, if you, um, if you know about UDAT, that particular interface, you'll see that there are some similarities. Uh, but we've identified four, five main services, core basic services that this infrastructure should provide. Uh, the ones in blue that you see there are ones that we are working on right now. Um, there's a subscription service which will link or will use federated identity systems, leverage federated identity systems so that we can um, harvest um, users that are already registered on those systems. Um, then there's a deposit function. Um, I'm tempted to say like Dropbox, but not like Dropbox. Because <laughs> you need to add metadata, obviously, to your data. We, of course, need to have the data well marked up, well described, um, well labeled in uh, uh, proper formats and so on. And so there's a metadata standard that we kind of attach, uh, Dublin Core or something like that, to the actual deposit um, process. What we want to avoid is this resource turning into a Dropbox, <laughs> a, a data junkyard, if you like. Um, and then uh, coming up um, this year, next year, a search facility, discovery facility, um, a way to store data that is sensitive or confidential um, in, a, in a trusted way. And then uh, the last one is preparing the data for processing on the high performance computing. So there's a staging area where you unpack uh, the data, it might be in, a, in the wrong uh, file format, um, so there's a staging area 
that moves it from, if you like, the archive to a buffer storage in the proper format and so on. Then further on, beyond that, uh, phase two, we would like to start with developing these virtual research environments or gateways, but each of these gateways will be domain specific. So for a particular individual or researcher, there would be a space where this person can have his scientific workflows, uh, his tools, analytical tools, data management plans, data sets, and uh, also some collaboration um, servers where he and a group can perhaps share and work together. Um, share data and share resources and work together. The two aspects that really had a major impact on the way we've designed this or would want to design is first of all, what we realized at the outset is that we need to manage data end to end, the entire, across the entire life cycle. From the point where it's uh, generated or ingested to the point where you archive or curate it or even delete it. So we were, the, one of the issues that we are now tackling is to how to automate that process. And what we started with is a data management plan. So there's a tool where the user um, develops a data management plan. It's derived from the, if you know about the DCC, Digital Curation Center, in the UK, they've um, developed a uh, globally recognized system, and we've adapted that one for our local use. We find, and uh, the DCC is also going that way, uh, that your data management plan, firstly, it's not cast in concrete. You can change it at any time. But you need to have, a researcher needs to have some idea at the outset, although this idea is usually very vague, about what he or she is going to do, what data is going to use, and that plan is the first take, a first cut, if you like, of the researcher's intent. The other reason for this is that it's also becoming, it is, a requirement by our national research funder, the NRF, is now requiring every uh, funded researcher to have a data management plan and also to have to comply with a, what they call an open access statement. So that's another uh, issue which I'll, I'll, I'll talk about later on. So uh, we, we, we think that the data management plan, and the DCC is also thinking this way, uh, will be extended into a data management workflow type of system. And that system will basically allow us to maintain um, um, good sound ma data management principles for, for data assets. The other aspect is that we've adopted what we call a tiered view of data resources, is the picture on the right there. A tier zero would be global, international resources like the SKA, CERN. And tiers here usually refer to who's managing or who's owning that particular data resource. The RISA is a national uh, resource, tier one. Then we are also developing tier, well, we're implementing what we call tier two data nodes. That would be um, usually consortium of universities and research institutions coming together. There's an economy of scale advantage benefit for that. There's also a data sharing benefit in that. And we try to avoid going down that, um, that hierarchy. Our argument is if you can stay, the, the further up you can stay, the more you can save and the more you can collaborate and share. Uh, okay, so far, what have we done? We've got um, under our first objective, there's a regional tier two node being in development right now. 
in the Western Cape. Uh, thematic focus is for now astronomy and bioinformatics astronomy basically because of the SKA we need to have um, some local um, investment into that. Uh, bioinformatics because it's a well-established area amongst the uh, institutions in that region but there's nothing against that same resource being used for other um, um, research. Uh, some of the services we're developing, while well, we're building a new server cluster, the existing hardware is pretty old, it's 2008, so it's reaching the end of its life, and drives are failing, and things are falling over, so there's a refresh process, if you like, technology refresh process uh, ongoing. Uh, the DMP tool, um, we're also with donor developing what happened is that the South African government has been identified as one of the what they call MPAs multi primary administrator so there's six of these across the globe at the moment and the one in South Africa and I think there will be another one in Rwanda will cover essentially uh, the African continent in terms of uh, PID administration and so on so we're part of that process and we our slice of the cake is research objects digital research objects and we will become if all goes according to plan a registration authority meaning we can dish out um, DOIs and handles for data uh, digital objects so we're building that um, and then there are some other smaller um, um, activities as well. In the data management uh, objective, we are developing policies. It's awkward. Um, and basically, what we're discovering is that we need more lawyers than techies <laughs> to do this um, because there are regulations globally and nationally that, you know, data cannot just be open, open, open. So the, what we're seeing is a spectrum of open to closed data sets and we're kind of converging to five categories or classifications from fully open to fully closed. And for each of those categories there's a host of issues that you need to consider. In South Africa's case there's a thing called the Poppy Act, Poppy Act, protection of private something. Yes, information, thank you. And those regulations are, um, we need to, you know, tread very carefully. It's a minefield from a technical perspective. Um, and um, because we're not a, that is Nikki or Dirisa, we're not a, a, we don't have a legal persona. So everything must go through the CSIR, which is the legal persona, the host of Nikki. And so everything must, from a legal perspective, be uh, it's, it's subject to a process uh, which um, is a nightmare sometimes. So there's that aspect. And then there's the softer side, which is the development of guidelines practices, recommendations for users, um, end user agreements and those kinds of things, and the way in which we can manage subscriptions. That's ongoing at the moment. Uh, we've developed a national master's and, uh, in fact, a master's in science and a master's in arts in what we call e-science rather than data science. Uh, the argument being that we don't want to create more computer data scientists but what we would like to do is migrate this practice of data science to other non-traditional disciplines so your health um, scientist your social scientist your arts and culture person your history person expert they are now all beginning to digitize what they are doing and a lot of their research is becoming digital 
And the idea with this qualification is to introduce them to that world, the world of uh, data science tools and applications and analytics and all of those kinds of things um, that pertain to them doing digital research. So we've avoided data science because the it's loaded. You know, it comes from it's either statistics and computer science and machine learning and those kinds of good tools for everyone to use, but uh, there's just that um, baggage that we would like to avoid. The NRF is the local um, research funder. They are ha well issue, have issued, I'm not sure, a call for data intensive research in these non-traditional disciplines. Because what we find is that in the traditional disciplines, it's kind of well funded. There's a lot of funding, well, in South Africa for students and for researchers to conduct the data science um, research in say astronomy or bioinformatics and those usual customary um, disciplines. Uh, courses that we're running with um, some of our uh, stakeholders, data and software carpentry courses with IBM uh, MOOCs that we've obtained from them that we have made available. Uh, advocacy, we've got a lot of workshops that we do, uh, we are, um, have good um, relationships with local organizations and then further field, we're very active in RDA, CODATA, WS, WDS, um, we participate uh, in some of the subcommittees, task groups, working groups, uh, some of us are chairing some of these, and so we're very active there. We had a presence at Data Con. Uh, last year, we were at plenaries. We have our own e-research conference, local one. And then lastly, we're developing, we have developed a data intensive research strategy and we we're involved with ASAF as well in the DST in the development of the SADC uh, cyber infrastructure framework. How's my time? Um, and then last slide, almost last slide, sorry. <laughs> This is, uh, this is what we are going to do next. We're distinguishing between active and passive data. Active data is online, interactive. The person wants to use that data right now, wants to have access to it right now. So it should be available immediately. Passive data is more like an archive, a museum. Data that you want to keep, but you might not want to use straight away. So there's those two very big functional um, requirements. We are now um, trying to procure uh, eight petabyte storage for the active data side with cloud services. And hopefully, if we get the funding, uh, 40 petabyte tape drive, uh, tape robot that we can use um, to archive data. Because there's a lot of people, organizations, coming to us and saying, we just need a place to store out. Do, should we go to Amazon? Uh, what should we do? And that sort of thing. And we feel that there's a national obligation to provide that sort of service. Uh, data management, yeah, we're working on uh, automating some of the policies, um, computer actionable policies. Uh, and then we hope to expand the masters to PhD and perhaps postdocs. And we think we need two kinds of resources. One is the person that's actually using the resource, the cyber infrastructure and the data storage and whatever else, making use of it to do his or her specific research in his or her domain. But what we also need, especially in South Africa, are the technical people, what I call the engineers, the people who can actually push the boundaries in terms of technologies that we can use. Um, and I'm thinking of a few people at the moment um, for, for managing um, cyber infrastructure and developing, your cyber, maintaining it and keeping it relevant. Outreach, we are hoping to establish what is called the South African Research 
Data Alliance is a kind of a forum like the RDA, but in this case, a national one where people can come and share ideas, give feedback, gripe, um, and so on. Um, and then, if all goes to plan, uh, to plan the hope is, uh, in fact, we are about to submit an expression of interest to host the International Data Week in 2018 in South Africa. And that would be a really cool thing for the African continent if we can pull that one off. Um, so I'm holding thumbs. Uh, and then we need to get together so that all of us on the African continent actually, let's, you know, we can do so much more if we work together. Um, and that leads to the, the last point there. And that is to develop a shared African cyber infrastructure. Okay, that's with my last slide. I think this is basically why um, I think most of you are aware of this. Uh, there was mention about the fourth paradigm. People are now questioning whether it's really so new, different. But this is why we want to do this. It's just a, a, a reminder, uh, kind of. Thank you.